Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in, everybody. I am going to take a quick moment and invite some people into this fresh word. Um, stop what you're doing. Grab a pen. Grab a piece of paper. I have a fresh word for you that is going to be a blessing to your spirit and to your soul. If you find yourself in a place where you are struggling, this is a word for you to give you hope, to ignite your faith so that you can go after everything that is actually legally and lawfully yours. I am Lakeisha Lewis, one of the founders of the Ruth Group, and this is your Ruth Moments. This is a time for you to come to steal away, to remain unshakable. I want to fuel you with energy, passion, joy, and faith to keep moving forward with God's plan for your life. So stop what you're doing, grab a pen, grab a pad, and join me for this fresh word. I pray that it will be a word that's in season, a word that is on time for you. And so um, our group is a women's group. It's an acronym that stands for Remain Unshakable Through Hardships. We actually come out of the book of Ruth. And so um, we started off in my living room meeting with one another, and um, it has grown. It has grown to to be um, a private Facebook group. It has grown to where we meet on Thursday nights. It has grown into a website. It is birthing multiple ministries and God's hand of provision is upon it. We are seeing growth. We are seeing God take it to new levels. And so we are ever so grateful and thankful that you have joined us. If you are a part of the Ruth group, I want you to know that it's not by happenstance. It is actually divinely orchestrated. And so, um, you have a Ruth anointing on the inside of you that God wants to stir up and to activate. There were some things that God first told us when we first got started um, was that um, we had to be committed, consistent, and transparent within the group um, in order for us to experience the free flow of Holy Spirit. And when we, we protected that, when we went after that, we have begun to see growth um, we began to see miracle signs and wonders. And so um, if you are part of this group, God wants to activate your Ruth anointing. That is an anointing that you can remain unshakable, that life happens to all of us. And no matter if it's something that you went through or that you're going through or, or that you're fearful that may happen, um, we want you to remain in faith. We want you to embody uh, the Ruth the Ruth woman and the Ruth group. Um, hey mom, thank you for hopping on. Um, we want you to embody what that means. And so we want to see you go after your God given passions and give birth to your divine destiny because we know that it's never too late for you to walk it out. If you still are alive and breathing on planet earth, God still has something that he wants for you to do. He, you, he wants you to leave your unique an uncommon mark on this world and on the generations that are here and those that are to come. And so we want you to remain unshakable through hardships. We learn, we grow, and we win. We learn, we grow, and we win. So we don't focus on our mistakes. We don't focus on our past. We work, we focus on learning and growing so that we can walk in that season of winning. And we are committed and consistent and transparent. We have made a decision to do life with you. We want to inspire you. We want to ignite you. And we want to invite you to walk out your purpose. So much so that you embody the scripture. Our group is founded on Ruth chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. Ruth said to Naomi, don't force me to leave you. Don't force me to go back to my people. Let me go with you. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you sleep, I will sleep. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. And that is where I will be buried. I ask the Lord to punish me if I don't keep this promise. Only death will separate us. We want you to embody that scripture that no matter what the enemy throws at you, no matter who comes against you, no matter what you've experienced, no matter what you've been through, we want you to have that Ruth anointing that says, I'm not turning back. 
I'm going to keep pressing in. I'm going to stay committed and consistent with my relationship with Christ, with God. And I'm going to walk out my purpose. What he's placed on the inside of me, I am going to give birth to it. Hey, Deandra. Hey, B. Thank you for hopping on, ladies. I appreciate you. I should have said B and D. <laughs> thank you for hopping on. Um, and so as we come together on Saturdays, I want to just be that vessel that pours into you. So many times we just don't have um, a crowd of people or, or people who are active in their faith and they are bold enough to wear it on their sleeve to even um, feed us, to nourish us, to encourage us. And I want to be that for you. And so we've been doing this series called Unrecognizable. And we started off, it was unrecognizable, hidden in plain sight, and we have had unrecognizable life, we had unrecognizable um, you, we had unrecognizable now walk, walk. And so there's two parts to that. So before I dig into that teaching, um, I just want to let you know that we will be receiving communion at the end of this. This is the time to go ahead and grab your elements. You can use anything that is representative of the body and anything that is representative of his blood, the cup of blessing. You can use anything. It is symbolic of you putting your faith in action. And when we receive it, I want you to open up your heart to be receptive. I want you to be open and receptive to what God is doing in your life. It is a time for you to begin to open up your heart so that you can receive by faith your miracle, what you are believing God for, the new thing that he's doing in you and through you and in your life. And so I had a little message already prepared. Um, this is not the the message for today. This is not your Ruth moments, but I wanted to let you know that, that you can sit at many tables. Um, it is important that you sit at many tables um, when it comes to feeding your spirit and soul. Okay, I when I went through the journey with um, going through chemotherapy, God gave me specific instructions. He said I could listen to Joyce Meyer, Mama Joyce. We I could listen to Joel Osteen, Uncle Joel, as me and Sophia call him, and Uncle Joseph, uh, Joseph Prince. And the reason why he told me that he gave me those, he said I know that these that you know that these are safe messages. That you can hear this without um, feeling like you need to force or manufacture your healing. But this will promote um, the, the atmosphere of faith. And it will encourage you and build you up to realize that you do not need to earn it. Nor do you need to deserve your healing. It's something that I freely give to my children. And so I know when I sit down at their table. Okay, so I'm going back to what I was saying. When I sit down at their table. Um, I know what I'm going to be served up. Um, Joseph Prince is going to give me grace. He's going to help me fall in love more and more with Jesus. He's going to unveil the heart of Jesus and who he is. And as I see him more, I see myself more and I see the will of God more. Um, Joseph or Joel, Uncle Joel is going to come with that faith and hope message. He's going to have me believe for um, unbelievable things. He's going to want me to stretch my faith and have hope that God will do great and amazing things. And Mama Joyce is always the one who will get you right. Okay, if you're not acting right, you're going to get your act right. She's going to bring you that divine wisdom from on high. And, and so that's what he did. And then he's be, he hasn't stopped talking to me about these tables, about whose table are you eating at? What tables are you sitting at? What are you even eating? Are you fasting your spirit and soul? Is it starving? Are you starving your spiritual man? And so God has been talking to me. So even during my journey, right as I was coming to the end, I came across Pastor Real Talk Kim. And she is that one who's going to motivate you in faith to get up and move. That no matter what you're facing, you got to get up and move. You can't stay stuck. She is, that is her message. Like, you're not going to remain the same hanging around her. So in those times when I felt low, when I felt like the enemy was coming against me and I was just tired of life, she would come with the word of get on up, get unstuck, and keep moving. And so <laughs> she will definitely do that, B. She will light you on fire. And so I wanted to share with you, God put it on my heart to share with you that when I prepare a message, 
it comes from my own devotional time with God. It's when I sit down with him and, and the things that he has been sharing with me, those are the things that are the ingredients of my message. And what I do th throughout the week, throughout the month, throughout the year, I'm gleaning and I'm gathering. I've been talking about that in the previous messages. Gleaning means to gather, okay? And sometimes when you are a babe in Christ, when you're new to this walk, you don't fully understand all of the scriptures when you sit down to read you may not understand exactly what you're reading there's a lot of hidden mysteries and secrets and what god does is is if you will be open to him if you draw near to him he will draw near to you and he will begin to uncover he will be give he will give you understanding so that the word becomes ex exposed what's hidden in plain sight um will become recognizable to you and you'll be able to see things differently and so as i sit in his presence throughout the weeks throughout the months throughout the year i'm gleaning and i'm gathering and i'm gathering the ingredients and what i'm doing is when i sit down finally when i'm preparing a message i sit in his pre presence and he helps me prep and prepare this meal that i'm about to deliver to you He's divulging his, his recipe, an on-time recipe, and he, it's serving up nourishment for your spirit and your soul. I cook it up, and I'm tasting, and I'm seeing that the Lord is good along the way. And I'm serving it up with the help from Holy Spirit. Eat up this word of nourishment for your spirit and soul today. You will be stronger. You will be healthier. You will be wiser. And you will be more prosperous because of it. You will be open and receptive to the things that God is doing. One of the messages that I did when I went 30 days live, I went live for 30 days back in 2020. Woo. And it was so good. Every day God gave me a new message. It's kind of like the fresh manna with walking club. It, it, was, it was so good. And I got nervous about, about 10 days in. I'm like, oh God, can I keep this up for another 20 days? It's been so amazing. And one of the things that he told me during that 30 days, he said to tell my daughters that you, me, that I am your spiritual doula. <laughs> I'm your spiritual doula. And so what is a doula? She is actually a woman who hasn't actually gone through um, the, the specific training to deliver a baby. Well, I am a woman of God and I'm called by God to provide you with guidance and support by and through the word of God. I am assisting you with birthing your spiritual baby, okay? <laughs> I am just one of God's sources, and you may eat at many tables. Some you may eat at frequently, and some you may visit temporarily. Hey, Sophia. Hey, Yvonne. Thank you guys for hopping on. You may, eat at, you may eat at different tables. You may eat at one consistently, like that would be home for you. But then you may pick up and eat at other tables um, temporarily as God leads and guides you. But either way, I am always cooking of the nourishment you need to nourish your spiritual life and your spiritual babies. You were the babies that you were uniquely and uh, designed to birth. Okay, so that's what that's what I do. I'm cooking it up. I'm serving it up. I'm serving it up for you and all I do is I take all the ingredients he gives me and then he strings it I sit in his presence and he strings and he creates a message to serve up to you so I hope you enjoy this meal this message is called unrecognizable walk unrecognizable walk that is a walk that will walk you into your blessing okay now what is walk we all know that it, it, it it's an action word it's a verb meaning to move at a regular pace by lifting and setting down each foot in turn when um, never having both feet off the ground at once, okay? That's what actual walking is. And there are two things that you must realize about this unrecognizable walk that you are called to. One, when the Bible speaks about the walk, if you read a scripture and it talks about the walk, the walk is referencing your lifestyle. It is your mindset, your attitude, and your behavior. It is this for my note takers. The, when, the, when the Bible talks about your walk, it is referencing your mindset, your attitude, and your behavior. That is your lifestyle. 
And this is what your walk represents. Your walk is a reflection of what you believe. And so Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 14, I'm going to share with you. In light of all this, here's what I want you to do. While I'm locked up here, a prisoner for the master, this is Paul, I want you to get out there and walk. Better yet, run. On the road, God called you to travel. This is what it is to be a Ruth woman. It's for you to get out there and walk. Better yet, run. On the road that God called you to travel. I don't want any of you sitting around on your hands. I don't want anyone strolling off down some path that goes nowhere. And mark that you do this with humility and discipline. Not in fits and starts, but steadily pouring yourselves out for each other in acts of love. Ruth Moments is my act of love. You guys allow me to pour into you. It is something that I delight in. I am so grateful and thankful for the people who come and listen, who listen live, who watch the replays. You know, I love that you allow me to show my love for you every Saturday by allowing me the opportunity to pour into you. Alert at noticing differences and quick at mending fences. We have to be alert at noticing our differences and quick at mending fences, okay? You were all called to travel on the same road and in the same direction. So stay together, both outwardly and inwardly. Because a person, and it's in Proverbs, um, as I'm sharing this with you, Holy Spirit is reminding me that it, there's a scripture in Proverbs that says that a person can say, hey, come to my house, come sit at my table, come eat with me. But in actuality, their heart is not in it. Their heart is far from you coming in. They're not excited. That's lip service. And so he's saying that we have to make sure that this is just not an outward confession, but an inward position or transformation. That it's both outward and inward that we have this oneness, this unity. And you have one master, one faith one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who rules over all, who works through all, and is present in all. Everything you are, and think, and do, is permeated with oneness. And there is Psalm 133, I believe, where it talks about, oh, how good it is when brothers dwell in unity. That means brothers and sisters. It's, it's the body of Christ. And so there is... Um, that what has been made available is the blessings of God when there's unity. Um, we can we can agree to disagree as long as we keep the love and the unity. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you should lo all look alike. Pay attention. This doesn't mean that we all should look alike and speak and act the same. I'm gonna say it again for the people in the back. That doesn't mean that we all should all look alike and speak and act the same. Out of the generosity of Christ, each of us is given his own gift. We all have something to contribute. One of the things that we used to always say when we were meeting is that um, it, it God took care of this right away. He addressed this issue, the issue of comparison. He said, don't get into comparison. He warned us ahead of time, do not compare your gifts. And then he had us go into finding out what our gifts are and what different gifts are available. But you, because the tendency as human beings in our weaknesses, we have a tendency to compare gifts. Even if I'm a singer and I have the same gift as somebody else who sings, I bring my own unique flair to it. It's not the same gift because it has my fingerprints upon it. My anointing is different from somebody else's anointing. Even with me being a teacher and one who wants to be a doula to help you give birth to your spiritual babies, my imprint is going to be different from Pastor Kim's 
and Mama Joyce and Joel and Joseph because it's it's ingrained in my uniqueness and my uncommonness that God created. And so you have freedom in being who God created you to be, your uniqueness. You bring the flair. You you make it what it is. And so you all we all have to come to together, come together in oneness and in unity and be able to express the gifts that God has given us. Wellsprings of Freedom International um, is one of the ministries that really drove this home for me. Um, I went through their training because they specialize in healing and deliverance, and it's a gentle approach. It's a gentle, loving atmosphere that's saturated in prayer and worship, and they help you uncover the lies of the enemy and help you to overcome. Well, there is a room full of people. <laughs> When you go in there, there's a room full of people, about five to seven people, and each one of them has a gift. They have a unique gift. So they have one lead, one person who is orchestrating everything, and then they have like four or five um, uh, uh, discerners, people who are discerning what is happening in the spiritual realm to help uncover so that you can gain more freedom. And then they have somebody who's saturating the room in prayer. But each person's gift is different. Their discernment, somebody might smell, somebody might hear, somebody might have emotional or physical reactions. Everybody discerns, but when everybody gets into that room and begin to work together as a unit in oneness, it is nothing short of the miracle in the hand of God. And that is how we, the body of Christ, we have been called to function. And I have not, I, I mean, I love the way this ministry brings out everybody's gifts everybody's gifts and so i want you to know that if you are a ruth woman you have to activate your ruth anointing it is unique and uncommon and even if you have a similar category singing teaching prophesying um you're a beautician if you're an author if you are a teacher in the school if you're a nurse if you're a doctor if you're a lawyer whatever you're gifting your area the passion that god has placed on the inside of you it is different and it is unique from any other lawyer any other doctor any other nurse any uh, you have some something different that you bring to the table and it's you your personality and so this world's culture is to be the same. They want everybody to be the same. If I do things this way, then you should be doing things this way. And that's just not how the spirit of God works. Okay? <laughs> All right. So let's see. Where am I at? You have one master, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who rules over all and works through all and is present in all. Everything you are and think and do is permeated with oneness. But that doesn't mean you should all look, speak and act the same. Out of the generosity of Christ, each of us is given our own gifts. He's given us our own gifts with our own unique flair. And I want to pull that out of you. I want to give you the boldness and the courage to be the, the unique you, okay? And the world that you are in so that you can um, have the confidence to birth what God wants you to give to this world. The text for this... Um, the, okay, so the text for this is he climbed the high mountain, he captured the enemy and seized the plunder... He handed it all out in gifts to people. So that is your scripture to confirm that, yes, you be, you have a unique gift. Yes, you, Aunt Karen, you have a unique gift. Mom, you have a unique gift. Sophia, you have a unique gift. Kenya, April, we all have been given unique gifts, okay? He's handed out these gifts to people. Is it not true that the one who climbed up also climbed down, meaning Christ who came from heaven, who always was, who always will be, he descended to the earth as a, in the form of man. He was 100% God and 100% man. He, he also came down, he is the one who climbed back up after he went through the scourging and the beating and crucifying and giving up his life, he was then resurrected and he went and he climbed back up to the highest heaven. He handed out gifts above and below, filled the heaven with his gifts. Filled the earth with his gifts. There's gifts everywhere. He handed out gifts of apostles, 
prophet, evangelist, and pastor teacher to train Christ followers. This is not the just you got to fall in one of these categories. You don't know there's many gifts. This is just some that he's named to train the Christ followers in skilled servant work. These are the fivefold ministry working within Christ's body, the church, until we are all moving rhythmically and easily with each other. Efficient and graceful in response to God's son. Fully mature. Okay, this is the year for you to level your spiritual maturity. Fully mature adults. Fully developed within and without. Fully alive like Christ. This is why the enemy always wants you to get into a spirit of jealousy, comparison, strife, discord, because he likes disunity. That gives him a foothold. It gives him an opportunity to tear up what God is building up. And so this is why unity is so important. And this is why Pastor Kim is always saying, like, you got to check your heart. You got to make sure your heart is right. Because you cannot give the enemy a foothold. You cannot allow him to, to feed a spirit of offense and strife and discord within your family, within your church, on your job, in your school, in your community. Happy people do not go around um, creating misery. We just don't do that. No. Mm-mm. -mm unhappy people hurt people go around hurting people and so no prolonged infancies among us i declare and decree that there will be no prolonged infancies among us please will not tolerate babes in the woods small children who are easy prey for predators god wants us to grow up this is all that i've been saying this is coming out of the message translation god wants us to grow up and to know the whole truth and to tell it in love like Christ in everything. We take our lead from Christ, who is the source of everything that we do. If Christ is not at the center of it, then I'm, I venture to tell you that there's strife, confusion, and chaos that's, that's happening in that area. So we have to get back to the fact that he is the source of everything and keep him central in our lives and in all that we do. He keeps us in step. There's the walk. He keeps us in step with each other. His very breath and blood flow through us. This is why sickness must flee in the mighty name of Jesus. His very breath, his blood flows through us, nourishing us so that we will grow up healthy in God, robust in love. This is just like a mother who, who is carrying a baby. All of the nourishment and all of the oxygen flows through the umbilical cord. And that is what Christ is to us. His breath, his blood, we house Holy Spirit, and he is the one that is nourishing us with the robust love that Christ has for us. This is why this is an unrecognizable walk. It goes in com complete contradiction to the world's way of doing things. The world tells you to worry about self. To seek after self. You are the only one that's important. If you don't do it, then it won't happen. That's just not the case with God. In Luke 17, verses 11 through 17, um, I'm going to read this. It happened that as he made his way toward Jerusalem, he crossed over the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten men, all lepers, met him. Now, leprosy in the, body, uh, in the word of God is also symbolic for sin. Um, and so we are all sinners. We all have fallen short. So we are these lepers. As he entered a village, ten lepers, all, or all ten men, all lepers met him. They kept their distance but raised their voices calling out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Taking a good look at them, he said, go, show yourselves to the priest. They went, and while still on their way, became clean. Now one of them, when he realized that he was healed, turned around and came back, shouting his gratitude, glorifying God. He kneeled at Jesus' feet, so grateful. He couldn't thank him enough, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus said, were not ten healed? 
Where are the nine? Can none be found to come back and give glory to God except this outsider? The Samaritan was considered an outsider. He wasn't even of Jewish descent. Then he said to him, get up. On your way, your faith has healed and saved you. So he received a deeper healing because he returned to God. A lot of times, this can be symbolic of Christians. There are a lot of Christians who, who have accepted Christ into their life, and they go on. They, they're forgiven of their sins, and they know that. But they don't come back. They don't come back to praise. They don't come back to worship. They don't come back with a heart of gratitude. A lot of people have not returned back to church. And he's saying, come back and show your gratitude. They, I've kept you these two long years. I've kept you through the disease. I've kept you through the chaos. I've kept you through the confusion. Not only did I cleanse you and I, I made you as white as snow, but I've taken care of you and I've provided for you and I've protected you during this, this time. Come back to me and thank me. Because there is a deeper healing, a deeper freedom, a deeper deliverance that he wants to give to you. And so we know that the first thing is that our walk represents our lifestyle, our mindset, our attitude, our behavior. It reflects what we believe, but it also from Luke tells us that secondly, what we believe will be evident in the actions that we take. What we believe will be evident in the actions that we take. James 2 tells us that with faith without works is dead. Or um, if faith without works and if it doesn't have a, record, a corresponding action is dead. What use is it if I believe it but I'm not walking in it? If I'm not acting upon it? If God tells me to do something then and then I don't take action, then it dies within me. Never making the manifestation into this present world. And so faith has two things. It is our conduct. It is how we think. It's our behavior. It's our attitude. But then it's also evident by the actions that we take. And, the, and Jesus blessed them and said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were healed. So as they took steps in obedience and in faith, they were healed healed along the way and so many times we think that church is just an event getting saved is a one-time event no god continuously cleanses us and heals us and sets us free and gives us a, a higher level of freedom and deliverance and he activates gifts and blessing he always builds so understanding being a gleaner and just grasping hold what you can understand on this level you will then become a reaper a reaper is the one who actually will train you how to do this work yourself you have a deeper understanding and then you'll go from being a reaper to having a seat at the table where god begins to show you mysteries and secrets this is holy communion this is a place of intimacy and then from there you will own your field you will own your field hey chloe hey virginia hey jenny hey <laughs> thanks lady but god is telling us that he wants to build and when he tells us he instructs us when holy spirit on the inside of, inside of us instructs us to um to do give us an action um we should follow that prompting <laughs> Look, I have to be transparent. Okay, so I know this is going to be silly. But, okay, so earlier today, um, I was, you know, I get busy doing stuff. And um, I came in the bathroom and I felt Holy Spirit say, go ahead and take care of brushing your teeth now. And I'm like, oh, I got something I want to do. And I said, I, and I told Holy Spirit, I said, I know I'm going to regret not doing this. And sure enough, I got busy doing other stuff. And I completely forgot that I had not brushed my teeth. Like, what in the world is going on? So I done did my whole face, got my lips. And I'm like, that's why you told me to go ahead and take care of it when I did. Because now I got to brush my teeth with my lip gloss and all of this on. And <laughs> But he, it's in those simple things. It's in those simple instructions. 
And it's the it, it, it example of the simple promptings. He, he begins to teach us how to move rhythmically with his spirit in unity and in oneness. So, what you say you believe is always made evident by the actions that you take. What you say you believe is always made evident by the actions that you take. You must go when God says go. What if these lepers hadn't went when Jesus said, go show yourselves to the priest? What would have happened to them? Their healing only manifested because they took action on the word of God on the word of what Jesus instructed them to do. It activated their miracle. And many of you may be resistant to following the promptings of Holy Spirit because it's uncomfortable, it's unknown. You're not sure if God is going to answer your prayer or not. But I venture to tell you that even when there's no, because they didn't have any physical sign that anything had changed. There was no reason for them to believe that their leprosy was healed. And the only way that they could enter into the priest because of the Levitical law, the only way that they could show themselves to the priest is if they were healed. Okay? So why start a journey when you're not healed yet? Why start walking with God when you, you haven't arrived to that place that you feel like you should be at? Because. As you walk with God, as you act on his word, you are being healed step by step, little by little, you are taking new ground. Maybe this word is for you because you've been saying you believe, but your actions are speaking louder than your words. Maybe you've been saying, I believe you, God, that there is something greater for me to do here. But maybe your actions or lack of actions is speaking louder than the words that you have spoken. Some of the blessings that I'm experiencing right now in my life could not, do you hear me? Could not have happened if I would have stayed in the same place. If I didn't put my faith or my belief into action, I would not be where I am right now making the divine connections that I have made. God said, go. The enemy came against me. God gave me the release. I heard him say, that's it. <laughs> In my spirit, it was like me and him were one. I said, I'm done with this area. I'm leaving. I'm not staying here another moment. It's time for me to go. It's time for my family to go. And God said, how can you lead if you are not the one leading from the front? You cannot lead from the back. You have to be the one to step out in faith and show your family what faith looks like. You cannot lead from the back. You have to lead from the front. And so God has just, there was dreams that I had had prior to even knowing I was going to make a move. And I had to do it. I had to move. God didn't show me these miracles, making these connections to these people, unveiling these dreams that I had had until I started walking in faith and moving forward to the place that God had for me. Some of you may need to get in that position to receive what you're blessing or what you're requesting from God. Some of you may need to make a move. Maybe God's telling you to stop entertaining that individual because that person is dragging you down of, of the wrong path. It's taking you away from what you're asking. Maybe he's encouraging you to change your diet or your daily routine so that you can be a healthier version of you. That's one of the things that I've been doing. I've been, I've been, that's why I forgot that I, have, I hadn't brushed my teeth. It's because I've taken sugar out of my diet. And, you know, like I would drink coffee in the morning and I would have, you know, bread or pasta for lunch or a sandwich or and, and it leaves a film on your teeth. Well, when you take that stuff out, that film is not even there. It changes your teeth. It's healthier on your teeth. And so I, that's part of the reason why I forgot. I hadn't even brushed my teeth. Like, what, what is going on? <laughs> so maybe he's encouraging you to get more sleep. Because your body, when you're rested, 
your body begins to restore itself. It's doing what it was already created and designed to do. Maybe you're agitated and irritated with everybody and angry because you're not, you're tired physically. Maybe you're feeding your body a bunch of sugar and so you your body just doesn't feel good. You you're lethargic all day. You you rest you, you don't rest at night because you've been pumping popping sugar into your system. Maybe he's connected you to someone who can pour into you godly wisdom that is crucial for your next level of business or ministry. And, and maybe you feel uncomfortable with that person because they're not the usual crowd that you hang with. Maybe you're uncomfortable because they're, they're causing you to stretch and to fight and to, to, to move in faith where you people just have allowed you to wallow in self-pity and be a victim your whole life. Maybe you've been asking or desiring a shift and a change and a transition. And God says, yes, but you are unwilling to take the steps to see it manifest because you can't see how this, this step is leading you to what you want. There was no reason why they should have believed that when Jesus said, go show yourselves to the priest. That they, they, they still had all of the deformities, the, the, the eating away of the skin. There was no evidence that they were changing. Sometimes when you, you are a new babe in Christ, sometimes you, you, you don't see any evidence that you're different. But you are. You've already been changed. Your sin is not an issue. So why allow the guilt and the shame and the condemnation and the fear to control your life any longer? You are a new creation. You are the unrecognizable you you are a new creation in christ in john verses 13 uh or sorry chapter 13 verse 3 in the message translation i'm reading this from jesus knew that the father had put him in complete charge of everything that he came from god and was on his way back to god so he got up from the supper table set aside his robe, and put on an apron. Then he poured, a wa uh, poured water into a basin and began to wash the feet of the disciples, drying them with his apron. You have to know, you have to be confident in who you are in Christ. In order to walk this walk, to be uncommon, to not be um, driven by uh, fear of being different, to be set apart. You have to know who you are in Christ. You need to know who he is, who you are right now, a new creation, and who you are becoming. I'm going to say that again for my note takers. In order for you to walk in this level of confidence, to be humble, to not clap back, to be able to move forward in spite of and despite everything that comes against you. You have to know who he is and who you are right now, a new creation, and who you are becoming. You can't get ensnared. You cannot get trapped in the mistakes you make along the way. They are designed to get you stuck and Holy Spirit is constantly transforming you. You have to allow Holy Spirit to convict you and convince you that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus every single day throughout the day. You have to allow Holy Spirit to let you know that even though you might have just jacked out on Facebook or snapped on that person in the store, you have to allow him to remind you that that is done with. It's over. That was evidence of a dead man. You are alive to the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And you have to allow him to remind you that you are in the image of God. You are created in the image of God and the likeness of God. And that you are in right standing with God. The only way that you are going to be able to move forward with the plan that God has for you is for you to know who he is 
Know who you are and know who you are becoming. You're becoming more like Christ every single day. And you'll never become who you were created to be without this confidence. You will be easily offended and you will have a hard time with authority. You will have a hard time honoring people. You will have a hard time submitting to leadership and you will not be able to serve others. This is a part of your spiritual maturity. <laughs> half hood, half holy, yes. <laughs> you have to not be easily offended. You can't be a touchy Christian. You have to know who you are. Jesus even had to remind himself, knowing who he was, knew where he came from, knew what God put him in charge of. He reminded himself, got up from the table, and he washed his disciples' feet. Now, there's more to this than him just washing the disciples' feet. So when, when he got to Simon Peter, Peter said, Master, you wash my feet? Jesus answered. He thought it was beneath Jesus. Jesus answered, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but it will be clear enough to you later. Peter persisted. You're not going to wash my feet. Mm -mm, not ever. Jesus said, if I don't wash you, you can't be a part. You can't be part of what I'm doing. Master, Peter said, not only my feet, then wash my hands, wash my head, <laughs> wash all of me. <laughs> Jesus said, if you had a bath in the morning, you only need your feet washed now and you're clean from head to toe. My concern, you, my concern, you understand is holiness not hygiene so jesus wasn't talking about hygiene he was talking about holiness what is he talking about well peter wasn't perfect but his heart was perfect his heart was with jesus and jesus was teaching a spiritual principle here once you are in christ baptized in christ baptism is our spiritual bath our spirit and soul has been renewed we are alive and well we are cleansed of all unrighteousness you are cleansed of all unrighteousness even when you see the evidence of sin in your life you have been cleansed of all unrighteousness so you already received your spiritual bath you don't have to keep getting um re-baptized over and over again every day no it's already done once and for all you're baptized in christ now what needs to be cleansed is our walk so they, the disciples wore sandals and they would walk, um, dust and dirt would get on their feet. And so just like we live in this world, dust and debris from the world around us gets in our hearts, gets in our minds, and we must be cleansed. That The feet being cleansed is symbolic for our hearts and our minds, which is the seat of our thoughts. That is what must be cleansed daily. Hebrews 3 13 says that we must cleanse or we must encourage each other daily that is the cleansing we do this by the washing our spiritual feet so to speak with the water of the the water the living water of his word we cleanse our feet our spiritual walk our mind our attitude um our behavior by getting in the word of god it is the source of our cleansing and most people feel like they have to get themselves together before they even come to Christ. How many people have you invited to church and be like, nah, I can't go now. I need to get rid of this. I need to stop doing that. Man, I know I need to quit this. I know I need to quit that. Well, most people feel like that, that they have to give themselves a bath. But that's like you deciding to bathe yourself in muddy water. You can't cleanse yourself. You open your heart and you receive Christ. And as an outward expression of your inward transformation, you receive a water baptism. You cannot cleanse yourself. For those who are struggling, who want to see change, that's catching the replay, you cannot transform yourself. You cannot clean your life up. The only way to clean your life up is by getting in relationship with him, the one who cleanses you from the inside out you get cleansed on the inside your spirit and soul is made right with god and then as you begin to glean 
and gather and become a reaper and so on and so forth with your relationship with him, then it becomes a manifestation of your outward behavior. So now you're clean, but not every one of you. He knew who was betraying him. That's why he said not every one. After he had finished washing their feet, he took his robe, put it back on, and went back to his place at the table. Then he said, do you understand what I have done to you? You address me as teacher and master, and rightly so. That is what I am. So if I, the master and teacher, washed your feet, you must now wash each other's feet. I've laid down a pattern for you. What I've done, you do. I'm only pointing out the obvious. A servant is not ranked above his master. An employee doesn't give orders to the employer. If you understand what I'm telling you, act like it and live a blessed life. That is the unrecognizable walk that leads you into the blessed life that you've been praying and asking God for. This is why I'm your doula. I am caring, I'm caring, caring for you. I'm helping nourish and cleanse you with the word of God so that you can remain unshakable, so that you can remain healthy and strong in faith to give birth to a life of faith impacting this world for the glory of God. Listen, Jesus does not need your help. He doesn't need you to get into a position where you're trying to manufacture your miracle. He doesn't need you selecting that guy to be your husband. He knows who your husband is. And if you keep walking, if you stay in rhythm with Holy Spirit, he will lead you directly to the person that God has for you. If you're in business and your business is slow or your ministry is slow to take off, guess what? Don't try to manufacture that stuff on your own. Don't try to become a success on your own. Move with the rhythm, step by step. Follow Holy Spirit because he's leading you and he's guiding you. And he is putting, imparting favor and wisdom as you follow him. Step by step by step. You don't have to manufacture your miracle. Your action will actually, Holy Spirit prompted action will always lead you into the manifestation because it's already done. Holy Spirit is just moving you into the manifestation of it. It's already done. Your husband, he's already there. The business that you are looking to start, it's already done. The success that it will be, the customers, the clients, the ministry, the writing, the, 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 the clientele you need for your beauty uh, industry, for your hair, for your makeup, it's already done and it's already been established. You have to take action on the Holy Spirit's promptings so that you can walk into the manifestation. You don't have to manufacture your miracle. Abraham and Sarah is a good example of this. Abraham represents faith. Sarah represents grace. Faith and grace go hand in hand. We are the children of grace. We, like I shared in one of the lives before, we are like Abraham. Abraham was not a Jew. He was not. But him and Sarah, faith and grace, gave birth to the Jewish nation. But we are in the family of Abraham. Abraham is our father because we are a people of faith. And our belief has saved us. It has declared us righteous and holy. Regardless of what we've been doing. I know my spirit and soul has been made right with God. And if I stay in step. If I stay connected. If I stay feeding my spirit. And cleansing my, my spirit and soul. And nourishing and eating at the right tables. Eventually the manifestation of what I've been believing for. Will be made known to the world around me. Abraham and Sarah. Faith and grace made Isaac the child of God, the, the chosen, the one that God chose to bring Jesus through his lineage, not the Ishmael. And a lot of us, myself included, have given birth to a bunch of Ishmaels, things that I tried to manufacture. That was Sarah going to Abraham and say, sleep with my handmaid and she'll, and she'll have you a son and then I can take him and we can raise him as our own. That was not God's best. That was not his design. And so we can get into a place where we're trying to manufacture. So how do we get out of trying to manufacture what only God can do? Enter into that place of rest. 
enter into that place of rest like Jesus, or like Mary did at Jesus' feet. When we enter into that place of rest, when we let everything go, when we let all of our cares and concerns, our anxieties, our worries, our fears, and all of that, when we let our guard down, then Holy Spirit can show us the next step to take, the action to take. And if you want it to be Holy Spirit prompted. So we are all taking new levels. We're becoming, if you are new and you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, just cry out to him, Lord, I believe you. I believe that you took the penalty of my sins, my brokenness. I, I recognize that I'm broken and I cannot heal myself. And I need you as my Lord. I need you as my Savior. Cry out to him and he will receive you. He will draw near to you. And you will become a gleaner. Where you may not understand everything that's happening. You may not understand all of the scriptures. You may not have a clear understanding of the Bible. But he grasps hold of what you do understand glean and gather where you are on the level that you are on right now and then he will elevate you to become a reaper that means you understand and you're becoming a student of the word you may find yourself in that place right now that you are a student of the word and you're developing and understanding the kingdom culture or you may be the person that's seated at the table where god has it's a place of closeness and deep intimacy with holy spirit he's unveiling us secrets to you and mysteries to you about who christ is and what he's doing in the earth or you may be in a place where you own a field where you are positioned in your purpose and you're living out that purpose no matter what level you are on you have to remember to continue to walk by faith and not by sight and allow the word of god to move you because he says in luke 12 32 that don't be afraid, little flock, for it is gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. He wants you to have what you are asking for. He wants to bless you with it. That healing, that deliverance, that relationship, that restoration, that freedom from addiction, perversion. He wants you to be free from your trauma, your brokenness, your sorrow, your depression. He wants to give that to you. It gives him great happiness. It makes God happy when he can give it. Now you have to just make sure that you are walking worthy, walking, following him, so that you can receive the manifestation of what he's already given to you. He gave it to us through Christ. Jesus said that he came to give us that life, an abundant kingdom life. And he wants to set you, your life, ablaze for his glory and honor. Make yourself available for his use. He loves and you always win in the end. He loves you and you always win in the end. I'm right. That is your word for today. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Virginia. I appreciate you. Yes. You are in a place of unrecognizable walk. And maybe God is calling you to do some things that everybody around you just doesn't understand. And they, they, they don't get it, what God is doing in your life. And I want you to know that you can have the courage and the boldness to be uncommon. One of the definitions that I heard of holiness, holiness is uncommonness. That means that you are not afraid to stand out and be different. To be who God created you to be. You won't be happy until you are being the true authentic you. That you know that you have been called to be. You are actually in opposition when you are in addiction. When you are in ungodly relationships. When you are outside of the will of God. That is actually swimming upstream. You're going against the grain. It may seem like it's easier because that's what you've known. But that's a hard life. It's a hard life that comes with that. And so you will always be fighting and warring um, for your, your, your peace of mind when you are living in opposition to the truth of God's word. You will always be dissatisfied, disgruntled, unhappy, dealing with depression, lack in your life. You will see the evidences because you don't realize who you are in Christ who he has called you and created you to be. But once you begin to flow 
with the uh, flow of Holy Spirit, when you are in rhythm with him, you are in oneness and in unity with him, it's easy for you to serve and, and others, even when they may not agree with you, even when they may not think the same things that you think, you can still serve them, you can still honor them and love them in spite of all of that, because you know who you are. People can't take that experience that you've had with God away from you. And so you know who he is, you know who you are, and you know who you are becoming. And you can serve and be who God called you to be. Unapologetically, without shame, you can be free to be you. Yes, amen, B. You are in the flow. Amen, amen, amen. Yes. We are moving in the flow of Holy Spirit. So, Lord, we just thank you for this word today. We thank you that you are blessing Ivy. You're blessing B. You're blessing D. You're blessing Virginia. You are blessing uh, Sophia and Kenya. You are blessing Chloe. You are blessing Jenny. You are blessing Karen and Dorothy and Suzette. You are blessing. You're blessing all of your daughters, all of the people who are catching the replay. You are blessing us. You are cleansing us. And you're helping us to walk uh, worthy of the high calling that you have placed on our lives. We can straighten our crowns. We can wear them proudly upon our heads because we know that we've been crowned with your glory and your honor, with your favor and your wisdom. So, Lord Jesus, as we receive this communion, we receive all that you have made available to us. Divine healing, divine health, wholeness. We are provided for. We are protected we submit to you and your will and your way, and we say, have your way in us and through us, O oh Lord. We thank you for your body, which was broken, so that our bodies could be made whole. And as you are in heaven right now, fully healed, healthy, and whole, with a sound mind full of power and love, so are we in the earth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this cup which holds your blood. Thank you that your blood continues to speak. It speaks of blessings, of prosperity, and protection over your children. We plead the blood over our homes. We plead the blood over our lives and over our family and over all those who are divinely connected to us. Every leader, every teacher, every preacher, every pastor. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blood covering and we receive everything that your blood has made available. We wash ourselves and we declare that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. And we curse every, every plot, every plan, and every scheme of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. Take and drink. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. His mercies endure forever. Amen. So I'm so excited at what God is doing. I know God is breathing on my life. I know he's breathing on your life. I know that there is new levels of healing, deliverance, and freedom. So I want to invite you. Come out. We will be in Moline, Illinois, um, in May 20th and May 21st. Please come out. It's a Friday night and a Saturday. Friday night, we will do a service. It is open to everyone. Bring your family, bring your friends. We will have a fresh word. We will actually have an encounter with Holy Spirit. One of the ladies has the gifts of, gifts of healing. She will be there laying hands, prophesying, and doing whatever Holy Spirit wants to do. She will minister to the needs that are in the room. So show up open, have your heart and your mind open and ready to receive from God on that night. Then the next day, we are coming together for our women's conference. It is from 9 a.m. to 2, and we actually will we open up the doors about 30 minutes ahead of time so people can get in, get their seats. We'll have a continental breakfast. We will be serving lunch. Um, we actually have a kids conference, so there is no excuse. Bring your kids with you. We have free child care, and the kids will be learning about who they are in Christ. So we want them to know because the world will try to shape them and mold them. And it will, it, in the process of shaping and molding them, is going to actually tear down their true identity. So we want to be able to give your children that, that those tools as well so that you guys can continue the conversation when you get home. 
So make sure that you go to our website, IWillRemainRG.com. Under our event section is a link to Eventbrite. You can get your ticket on Eventbrite. Um, Sat Friday night is um, a free service offered for everyone. Um, but you need a ticket. You need to have your seat reserved because we are feeding people. We have gift bags. We're doing a raffle. We want to make sure that we have enough of everything for everyone. So you do have to register for the second day. Um, and that is a Friday-Saturday combo. We are going to have a cataclysmic encounter with Holy Spirit. I know that he is going to minister in us and through us. Your life will not be the same. So you want to be in the room. You will get to be with us. You'll get to spend time with us. So you, I, we got a dynamic lineup. We got Stacy Shinabrit. Um, we've got uh, Nicole, uh, Pastor Nicole. Um, we have Pastor, or, or sorry, Evangelist Nicole Turner. She's going to be there. So you do not want to miss it, miss out on it. I promise, it's going to be the bomb. So if you are able, please get in the room, be there, okay? Um, also, I have had the honor of, of being able to speak in Atlanta, Georgia, when Sisters Unite. Sisters in Power. I am a part of the lineup for the conference. I'm super excited. Last year, I was able to attend and be a participant, and God blew my mind uh, through that conference, and I know you want to be a part of this. This is a three-day event. It starts off with a uh, walking club Friday. We're going to do the walk with Miss JJ. Then we're going to actually do a brunch. Then we're going to have breakout rooms on uh, Friday afternoon. Um, where they're going to have teachings, and then Saturday is the conference, and then Sunday we're going to have service. I'm telling you, listen, the food that they had last year was the bomb, okay? The bomb. <laughs> it was so good. It was just a beautiful atmosphere. Um, everybody was loving and caring. I knew no one, and everybody just made me feel so at home. I was so, so appreciative. I was so, so blessed. So make sure you go to WinSistersUnite.com to get your ticket for that. Support your girl. Support me. Come out. Be a part of what God is doing, and you do want to be in the room. There's something different. Yeah, we can watch online. We can participate online, but it's different when we come together in the room. The Spirit of the Lord is always there, and he always shows up, and he always shows out. Also, we have been doing um, our AIM it's our Thursday night all-in mentorship where you can get a seat at our table, be a part of our conversation. And so we have wanted to expand that and offer that to people. If you're interested in having a seat at our table, please contact me, inbox me, because we want to bless you. If you want to be a part of Thursday nights, we meet at uh, 8 o'clock Central Standard Time, 9 Eastern, and you want a seat at our table, inbox me. Let me know that that's what you want to do, and we want to bless you, okay? All in mentorship. Be a part of our conversation. Also, we got Let's Talk Tuesday with KYC. Check out her message from this week on our Facebook page, or you can go to YouTube. Um, Let's Talk Tuesday with KYC. Um, or we have them on our website as well. If you are in need of prayer, April Grady, are, uh, Grady is our prayer warrior. She will stand in agreement with you, okay? She will bless you. She will pray over you and pray with you. And so sometimes you need to just join your faith with someone else. She is your girl for that. You can inbox her or message us at I will remain RG at gmail.com. If you want to just give to the ministry, you like what God is doing, you want to be one of those people that say, Lord, I sold into that, and I'm so glad that you have put it on my heart for me to be a part of what they're doing, go to our website. You can do that through PayPal, or you can do that through Cash App, dollar sign, remain unshakable. Okay? So uh, we do uh, coaching. If you want someone, a free consultation, we will be your mentors. We'll be your doulas. We will pour into you. We will help you discover who God has called you to be. We will help you to get more freedom, more healing, more deliverance in your life. You can also email us if you want to do that as well. I will remain at Gmail. I will remain at G RG at gmail.com. All right, ladies. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching the replay. I love you, ladies, to life. And next Saturday, I actually will not be on, but I will be doing a live replay. So that you can actually hear a fresh word still. I love you ladies. Have a good day and a blessed week. Bye.